what a series of extraordinary days these last few days have been. For those who came to my house lighting party, mission accomplished, thank each of you so much. For those who came in spirit, thank you as well. Your presence here really set a brand new, wonderful tone of energy in this house. It was extraordinary, so beneficial to every part of my life here, that the moment the last folks left, my physical body started to feel like it had just spent 10 hours at the gym, and that sounds terrible, but really it's super wonderful, suddenly, and I do mean suddenly, my shoulders ached as if I had been working out a lot. My back was sore, my hips and legs were sore, talk about a full body workout. Just as fast as these post-workout symptoms happened, the juice in my body completely drained out. I could barely keep my eyes open and it was only 7 p.m. By 9 p.m., I refused to go to sleep for the night prior to 9 p.m., I would be up way too early, I was out cold. I slept solidly until 6 a.m. and woke up as drained of energy as the moment I had gone to sleep. Hence no blog yesterday. Although the aftermath of the get-together sounds terrible, it really isn't, quite the opposite. We cleared the house. I was cleared of the remnants of energy that lingered upon me. Kinda like peeling a banana. Then you gotta drain the tub to let it all out. I could not understand why I woke up as depleted as I went to bed. I slept so solidly that I didn't even get up for my usual pee run. Once I got to the office and attempted to connect with my first appointment, a precious soul down under in Australia, I started to see it wasn't just me. We were supposed to meet on Skype, when I logged in it looked like someone did some serious house cleaning in there. I only had four contacts showing, I have well over a 100 due to the readings. I tried to find her via her email address, nothing, her name, nope. I sent her an email to add me, I never got a contact request. I waited a few minutes for her to reply, I didn't get one so I decided I will just call her. I tried three times. Each time the phone rang twice then my cell would completely shut down. What the F? I finally heard back from her, she kept trying to call me on Skype and the same thing was happening with her, disconnected. I have a 15 minute window built into the appointments in case someone is running late or we have electronic glitches, after that, we must reschedule or it would affect the next appointment's time. We had to reschedule. Thank God my next appointment called me and it was perfect, no glitches. When I connected to his field, I was not surprised it was a complete whiteout out there. However, there was a detail I could see that continued to surprise me. It was as if either we moved to just beneath the sky or vice versa. From my view it was as if I was seeing this massive north star resting just above the cone of light, where the open part is. The light from this star-looking thing was sparking a silvery white everywhere, however once it hit where the cone is, it was pure white light. This flood of light was so bright, so intense I could not see through it at all. I could feel where the skin is on the cone, but could not see it in any way. So I decided to look at his body, it too, was in a light-out flood, save the outline so I could be sure I was seeing him. The part that really surprised me was how this light got on him. Keeping in mind, the skin of this cone of light is about 3 inches from everyone's toes. So I knew that the light from this cone somehow entered that 3 inch space then reflected upwards to cover this beautiful man. It didn't happen directly. The one thing I have come to pretty much understand, at least in relationship to, this cone of light reminds me of an experience I had when I had my life between life regression back in September 2001, as I was getting certified to do that too. In this regression, we eventually went to talk to my council in the Temple of the Presence. The energy was palpable, intense, borderline overwhelming to my light body, still covered in density. Through the years and a ton of releasing work. I would be able to go back and my energetic alignment was much easier to sustain. 
This cone of light is very much the temple of the presence in our 11D platform. The source of all life. The God Presence, unrestricted and unfiltered to those who know themselves. Understanding that, helps me understand why this flood of light had to bounce or refract itself onto each one of us. To become equal in our realm of matter. It really takes the dual 1111 and puts one part on us. Literally. I had my guy ask questions to see if we can get beyond this flood, nope. All his questions were personal to his life field and the answers or replies had to emerge from the great flood underway. We rescheduled. Of course, I took a moment to have my own little hissy fit. When I was looking at a date to have my house lighting party, I originally had the 11th off. It is my spiritual birthday, the day the Ouija board changed my life forever. When I looked at my calendar, I take off Mondays and Thursdays, a wonderful lady already made plans to hang out with me on the 9th, so I had that day booked off too, and I decided 4 out of 7 days off is unacceptable and I changed my party to Thursday, my day off and opened up the 11th. Silly me. So when my third and final reading showed up, on her birthday no less, I already knew this was going to be a rescheduled event. But man oh man did some surprisingly juicy nuggets come out of her questions. I think we were able to see them because they had nothing to do with her, well, not directly anyways. What I was able to see showed up fully in my office and way at the back wall of the office too. She said something that just shook my exhausted body to the core, something I think spirit is going to address to anyone saying this over and over again, and the vast majority do. Everything is happening exactly as it should be happening. What the hell does that even mean? No one has to be responsible for personal choice, ever? Bullshit. We are in a landscape where the only outcome is due to personal choice. We have hundreds of thousands of incarnations to perfect our own process of personal choice. This landscape we call Earth has many times in the past, shaken off its inhabitants due to personal and collective choices that were not made from the highest of light. So of course all this brought us to the election that just happened. The visual is stunning, the information from the visual surprised me. Let's set up the visual. Two cones. One hours, this intense light and the other, darkness like I have never seen it before. Thick, rich and contained. The two cones were connected by the opening, ours was turned upside down, as opposed to the way I see it in readings, and the black was on the bottom, like an hourglass. There was a thin something or another between the top and the bottom so that we do not inadvertently affect or change the bottom part until we have consciously understood ourselves in this living light field we are now a part of. Spirit said plainly, we cannot use this light on others until we fully understand it within ourselves, within our own life. It is more potent than anything we have ever had released to us before and it is permanent. Unlike all the other times before where it was released, absorbed then released again. It was also stated in our conversations that this is going to be the ultimate fight, yes, they used the word fight, between light and dark. Our job right now is to know the battleground. I keep thinking of my first year in the bathtub, in meditation. My mind was pure black, barely any light shards coming into the ego. I had the greatest fight within myself to penetrate an ounce of light into my own battlefield. Persistence was its own reward. Thank God, in those times, my heart did have light in it, which helped my ego tremendously, but not without constant battles for integration, especially that first year. So then, naturally our conversation shifted to Trump himself. Wow easers, there he was floating at the back of my office. I never once tried to tap into him, nor Hillary. I let this all go to the collectives that would show up at the voting poll. Whatever the outcome, the challenge would be there, differently, but there nonetheless. From the hips upwards, Trump was charcoal black. Zero light, not even a speck. 
However, what really threw me for a loop, what should have been his root chakra, and to my eyes, the root is always red, his was orange. His sacral chakra lowered down to replace fully his connection to earth. His sense of self, small as there, is all that matters to him. I have to giggle, at least a little bit. No wonder his actual physical appearance is in the orange hue. Then. Even more surprising information came through our conversation. This man, now a man of the people, our president, gives us free reign to work on his energy systems. However, something I never knew, simply because I never knew anyone like him, energetically speaking. You cannot just go in and work on his heart energy because there is no electricity running through there. We must, eventually, and spirit will let us know when, work at the place he does have electricity running. His misplaced sacral chakra, located in his root. Also, in his orange root chakra, there are a lot of different sections. It kind of reminds me of stained glass and you have this black mortar or something separating the pieces but holds them all together. I found a great image to give everyone a visual. Ignore the yellow, it's all orange. So even his sense of self is individuated according to his ego needs. Another thing that came through our conversation was not interfering with free will. This again, not something I was familiar with. Anyone I have ever worked with, always gave me permission in some way. There have been times, the soul itself declined the work because the person incarnate would lose their lessons unfolding. My father for example. I brought my massage table to pot to work on him. The day I was going to put him on my table, his team stated quite clearly, this is not his path. Damn it. So I put his beautiful wife on it instead. Between now and the day Trump steps into his, God help us, please, roll as president, we can work on the one house that belongs to all of us, freely. The White House, the House of Representatives and Congress. Not the people, but the houses themselves. Gotta lay a foundation first. Otherwise it's a house of cards and it will blow away. All I can think about with these times emerging is what a doctor in school must do before they are set free to practice of themselves. Internships. The interns practice their craft alongside those who perfected the craft over time and use. For us, this has to be with not only our spiritual teams, but our ET allies as well. On my way into the office yesterday, I was listening to the keepers of the garden and they were at the place talking about Phil and his misuse of energy release. He was actually holding a realm together from the soul level. The rules of the universe dictate that you should only release light as the evolving inhabitants can use or understand that light. He released light energy faster than the inhabitants were capable of understanding it and like many other realms, destruction happened instead of what could have been. He was placed, for eons, in lower frequency places so he could fully understand why universal laws exist and it was explained why that light had been withheld from him until now. So, if we think we are perfectly doing what we need to be doing. I truly beg to differ. We are working out our kinks, our relationship with matter and light and everything in between. Free will will never ever be interfered with. And this is why know thyself is more important now than ever before. So with all this new information released and my mind swimming in exhaustion, I went home to process and do one homework session. It was all I could do to keep these damn peepers open. But the beauty of our time together, we share at the soul level, and therefore the body rehydrates for our connections. But the moment I hung up the phone with the meditation homework, I sank into my couch. It had its own magnetic field sucking me in. I laid down, I couldn't fight it anymore. As I surrendered to more sleep, the last visual I saw was of my own body, straight down the middle, and these beautiful orange flames coming out of me. They were thin, and about two feet high. Beautiful really. I was out for hours. I have no idea what happened or even, 
Why I had seen those flames. At least not yet. Even when I woke up, I was not fully energized, but the one thing I know, it will all be revealed as we move forward. On that note, I have got to take a shower and unscramble my day. I am so lost in what day it is, what is happening on what day and well, today I have more plans than time. It is only this morning did I fully realize it is Saturday, ET group day, and I made plans to go see Doctor Strange in full DS today. I need a time orienter. Ha ha, gotta love a good challenge. Ha ha. I love you all and thank you for being here, ready, willing and very very able. Hugs filled with right time, right place, right orientation. Lisa.